Getting grounded. There's a lot of things in life that I don't really understand, but if there's one thing I can truly comprehend, it's being grounded. Because yeah. in my time, I've served a total of 547 days and 16 hours in the slammer. And through a year and a half of extensive first-hand research, I've come- In middle school, I was grounded from my Xbox during the weekdays. I couldn't touch it during the weekdays because I didn't have good grades. And it's not because I was dumb. I there would just be I would lose class assignments all the time. I would be I rack up zeros because I don't know where the work is, where the homework is. And I'm like, I'm not about to redo this. First off, why are we getting homework in the first place? I'm at home. But yeah, I had to tee up. I had to tee up in high school because, you know, I was thinking like college and stuff. So I was like, and now I have to pay attention. You know, that's how, you know, you get like a, like a, a decent DGPA. My GPA, I, my DPA could have been better. What was sold me was Spanish. My teacher, she didn't do this. She did this thing where, 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 where you had to negotiate for the grades you got. She didn't grade papers. She said, what grade do you think you get? And then let's negotiate it. Cause that's how life is. You have to negotiate things. I got a C because of her. My only ever C in high school was because of her. And I, oh, she gave me a 79. Come to the professional conclusion that Just getting grounded 80. is straight ass, bro. If you're locked in your room with no phone, no computer, like, what do you want me to do? Think about my actions? <laughs> Hell nah. Being grounded had a young me doing the stupidest shit ever, bro. Me like, too. I was popping handstands, hitting my head against the wall, playing with the door stopper thingy. Shit, I got so bored, I even read a few pages of a book like an absolute nerd. And I was swinging around my, uh, my charger cord. Now that I think about it, Percy Jackson and the Battle of the Labyrinth was actually a spectacular read. Now listen, there's only one thing worse than being grounded, and that's being falsely imprisoned for life. Well... I'm so glad he's punching him instead of the other option he could have did. And now, now that I think about I'm it, there's I'm so a glad he picked him up and started punching him, bro. Because I thought he was about to pick him up. A lot of things worse him. than being grounded. But, but one of which is being grounded during summer, bro. There's Ooh! something about being able to hear all the happy children, the ice cream trucks, your homies grounded having during fun, summer the has host to be throwing a rocks at your window, asking you to come outside. Well, you just cry yourself to sleep because there never was any host throwing rocks at your window asking you to come outside. It's just you, your Percy Jackson books, some used toilet paper, and the existential thoughts in your head, questioning if it's even worth it. And listen, I'm sure everyone can pick up on the fact that I'm a really intelligent dude. Sm Smart all around, really, but trust me when I say I wasn't always this smart, bro. In fact, in okay. kindergarten, my dumbass fully believed with my whole heart that being grounded meant your parents would just dig a decent sized hole in your backyard, toss you in, and bury you alive for the time being. And so I'm that is crazy, bro. I remember the first time my mom did not put money under my pillow because of the tooth fairy, because you know that's how that's what we do, right? And I was like mom what what the, the tooth fairy i put a tooth under my pillow and 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 it was still there in the morning and she was like oh my god maybe the tooth fairy took a break try it tomorrow i was like i, I was throughout the whole day i was like oh my god the why didn't they give me my little my my, my money then i was tweaking hey i'm live on twitch every single wednesday friday and sunday link is in the description i better see you there sure you could imagine my surprise when my og friend of five days said yeah i got grounded for two whole weeks holy fucking shit balls dude are you okay no man it's really hard I, I didn't get to touch any of my toys or anything damn how long ago was that man oh i'm still grounded Wait no, you're not. Yeah, dude. I'm grounded right now. <laughs> no, no, the fuck you're not. And I wouldn't truly find out what being grounded was until Yo. seven years later. I was in what? grade seven. It was a beautiful, sunny summer day at approximately 11 a.m. And me and the boys were freely roaming our city. Little did I know good, we yeah. wouldn't be free for long. And as the boys and Please? I roamed the city looking for a move, one of Bob's girls calls him up and is like, okay, so my friend Becky is in Hawaii for a few days with her family, and she said I could bring you over. And just like that, Bob could have wrapped it up and claimed some cheeks. But the boy Bob was never one to leave the homies behind. I mean, it was seventh grade, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, 
claim some cheeks in seventh grade is crazy to say. So not only did he convince his girl to let us come, but he went above and beyond. He got his girl to bring some of her friends over too. And now we're hyped because we had now located the move and quite a marvelous move if I do say so myself. Now keep in mind, all of us knew Becky and had been to Becky's house many times before, but Becky was all the way in Hawaii, so she had no clue about the marvelous move about to take Damn. place at her own crib. But regardless, me and the homies walk into Becky's crib and they look- They didn't lock the door? If everyone's gone, how, how did y'all just walk in? How, how did y'all just walk in if everything's gone? Loki got a little get together in the works. I see Bob's girl. I see How you Bob. gonna say Becky is dumb? Becky don't own the house. Girl's friends, and then I see a mutual friend of mine named Dennis. And he brought his girl. Now, a little backstory about Dennis. Dennis was two years older than me, making him in high school. And to be fair, from grade seven to high school is a colossal difference. It is. Dennis was taller, had a more developed frame. And Dennis even had some facial hair in progress. The amount of facial hair that put my peach fuzz to shame. And to put it quite simply, Dennis was a menace. But regardless, that's my homie's homie, so I walk up and dap him up. And then everyone heads over to Becky's room. Now keep okay. in mind, Becky had simply invited Bob and Bob's girl to come over. And somehow, we ended up being eight people deep in that joint. And so that means technically- So if Becky's on vacation, how did she invite Bob and Bob's- How does that- That don't even make sense! What? The other six of us were straight trespassing. So we were all chilling in Becky's room, chopping it up for a good hour and a half until eventually people start exploring her house. Now in Becky's room, it was just me, Bob, Bob's girl, and Bob's girl's friend named Lily. And so we're all just talking until I hear someone yell from the room down the hall. Yo, Chains, get in here right now. And I don't know exactly what I was expecting to see as I walked into that bathroom, but it was absolutely not seeing Dennis drop a condom filled with water Water on Billy's head and of course I laugh because th that's that's comedy gold right there but it also made me realize maybe we shouldn't be here dropping condoms on each other exactly head, where did you even get it from you brought it with you I guess bro who was I to tell Dennis what to do he had facial hair so he was practically a grown man to my standards so I just turned around went back to the room and continued chilling with Bob and as we talked the music progressively got louder and Dennis progressively became more of a menace and it had got to the point where the speakers were booming and Dennis was lobbing condom water balloons off Becky's balcony and then what? one time Dennis either almost hit or just missed Becky's neighbor with one of these condom water balloons. So this grown man looks down at a condom that seems to have fell from the heavens. Then he looks up and sees Dennis scrambling inside the Becky's crib with the speakers blasting. That's Loki attempted murder. Dennis would be under would be arrested under my book. Especially if he has one of those skin tones that we don't like. <laughs> those darker skin tones. <laughs> That's that's at least 26 years <laughs> music and then he continued on his way and we were all just having a fantastic time in Becky's room until we hear the downstairs door swing open and we all absolutely shit our pants and run onto the balcony Hey, I just texted the family who lives here and they said no one is supposed to be in the house Everyone needs to leave right now or I'm calling the cops How do you have the family of the house numbers y'all have y'all neighbors numbers? I mean, that's a W neighbor, but that's kind of weird, too. And that's exactly what we did. No messing around. We were out that hoe. And we all went to Bob's girl's house for an emergency meeting because we were all scared as fuck. And now Bob's girl and Becky are texting and Becky's like, my parents are pissed. They want to talk to everyone's parents and they know how many people were there. So we all devise a foolproof plan. Okay. okay. We give Becky our phone numbers, tell it's our parents' phone numbers, and we act super disappointed in our children. We all agreed on this plan and the emergency meeting was dismissed. Okay. And over the next few days, we all got texts from a very unhappy Becky's father who made sure to specify the amount of condoms that were found in the bathtub. We all respond with some bullshit along the lines of, Hello, Mr. Beckerson. I'm very sorry to hear <laughs> about the crazy. inconsiderate acts of Chains and how he's invaded your home. Rest assured, Chains will feel the wrath of this thick leather belt as it repeatedly beats against his cheeks to discipline him for his heinous actions. 
Thank you for okay. bringing this to my attention. But come to find out, Lily's dumbass responded with some shit like, Dear Mr. Beckerson, thank you for letting me know, but Lily did nothing wrong, as she didn't know she wasn't allowed there. Plus, she didn't even make a mess or anything on God. Put some respect on my daughter's name. <laughs> Period. And just like that, our foolproof plan got fucked. And Becky's father texted each of us saying, You are coming to the house at 3.15 p.m. today, or I'm calling the cops. And shit. Um, sir, I have basketball practice afterwards. I, um... I can't come. Looking back, Becky's father was most definitely bluffing. Like, say I didn't go. What was he gonna tell the cops? 911, what's your emergency? Hey, uh, there, there was eight kids who invaded my home three days ago. Okay, sir, did they break in? No, uh, well, no, no, no my, my daughter, my daughter gave them the key. Sir, why the fuck are you calling 911? There, there, there was condoms in the bathtub. But like I said, I wasn't very smart, and I didn't have the brain capacity to think that far ahead. So everyone shows up to the house, and Becky's father sits us down and makes each of us individually call our parents and explain mm. what we had done. And I went first. Hey, mom, uh, so... I went to Becky's house the other day, but she was in Hawaii, and I, I wasn't really invited. And there, there, there was condoms in the bathtub. Needless to say, we all got our shit whooped, and I received my very first grounding. Yo! With Yo, that's a setup, bro, because dude was playing with the condoms. If anything, the neighbor should have said the condom was full of water, and it landed on the ground. You know what I'm saying? That's a setup, bruh sentence of one month in the slammer that was a setup bro it wasn't man that's bs that's bs they acting like they were having sex